It's that time I'm going to show you my eyeshadow palette collection. If you're new here, eyeshadow palettes are my pride and joy. I have hundreds of eyeshadow palettes. Um, no exact number known here, but I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. And yeah, so I keep all of my eyeshadow palettes in here. I'll show you more in a second. If you notice some eyeshadow palettes missing, I actually do have a number of eyeshadow palettes in my filming station in my room. So if things are missing, and that's most likely why, being used in another video. But yeah, before I get started, I just want to address the questions that always get asked the most when I post videos like these, like why do you need that many eyeshadow palettes and what are you gonna do with them? So pretty much, um, if you don't know, I do YouTube full time. I also am on Instagram and TikTok. So what I do with all of these palettes is I post them on my social media. I don't buy makeup to use it up or anything. I buy makeup to talk about in my videos and for content creation. I get my use out of it that way. It's a little different than most people I know, but it works for me. Helps pay my bills. Not so bad of a gig, I can't complain. And then what I do when they get old is I get rid of them. Or, I, well, if they're old, I don't give them away. But yeah, if their time is done, they have no more relevance on my channel and they can't be used, then they go bye-bye. So. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, but I do keep a lot of palettes around even if I'm not using them in my everyday routine simply because I get inspired for my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube videos all the time and I never know when I need to go back. All right, let's get into the palettes. Just so you can see where I'm storing all of my palettes, I have this nice little corner in my apartment that these fit perfectly. These are all IKEA drawers. There is one unit right here. I, I don't keep too many eyeshadow palettes in here, but I'll show you the eyeshadow palettes that are in here. The majority of my eyeshadow palettes are in these two. I like this specific style of drawers from IKEA because they are very wide, but I can still see a lot of my palettes. So yeah, I feel like I have a good vision of what is in these drawers. I love, love, love having these. So I am skipping the top drawer here because I actually keep my luxury face palettes in this drawer. But the one below, as you can see, is a very coveted drawer for me. This is all of my Pam McGrath palettes. Let's get into it. So I'll start off up here. So first we have the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Rose Decadence, and this is in no particular order, you guys. It's just as I grab it. I did just do a full Pat McGrath collection video, so I'm not going to talk too much about, about these, but I really like them. This is the Mothership Subversive Lavian Rose. This came out a while ago. Absolutely stunning. I want her to come out with a new version of this because it is such an older palette. I have the Bridgerton palette in this corner. This is is the newest palette that came out. There's been two Bridgerton launches and you'll see the other one, but this one is very beautiful. I'm gonna use the same words to describe all of these palettes and I'm apologizing. <laughs> then we have the Divine Rose Luxe Quad in Eternal Eden. This one is just a very simple pinky palette. I haven't used this one much if I'm being honest with you guys, but it is gorgeous. This is the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Bronze Borealis. This one is a little bit more wearable. This, this came out during the holiday season this year. Next up, we have the Venus in Fleurs in Voyeuristic Vixen. This is one of my favorite quads from Pat McGrath. Such an amazing formula. This is the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Risque Rose. This one is also super extra gorgeous. Look at the shade right here. Moving on up, we have the Celestial Divinity Quad in Fleur Fantasia. Not one of my favorites, but it's definitely grown on me. I think it's a great spring palette, even though spring is coming to an end. This is the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Deep Space Divinity. Honestly, not one of my favorites, but it still is very, very pretty. Here is another quad. This is the Blitz Astral Ritualistic Rose. This is an older one, but it is one of my favorites because it has some of the creme de la creme of the Pat McGrath formulas. This is the Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. This is another one with the creme de la creme formulations. She hasn't come out with quads in this style in a long time and I just really wish she would. This one is one of the most unique color stories Pat has ever come out with. I think this is the last quad that I have to show you. This is the Celestial Divinity Quad in 
oops, an <laughs> interstellar icon. I love the tones of these. I think they're somewhat grungy and really beautiful. Okay, so next we have this Mothership 6 panel right here. This is the Subliminal Dark Star. This came out a few years ago, so you can't get a hold of it, but very smoky. Here is the Subversive Metamorphosis palette. This one was never really one of my favorites, but here it is. <laughs> Still have it. Oh, and here is the first Bridgerton palette that I was talking about earlier. I believe this is called, yeah, Diamonds of the First Water. And this one is very pink, and then you have that fun pop of blue. If you want more in-depth thoughts, I do recommend you check out my Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette rankings. I go into more depth of my thoughts on these palettes. Okay, now we have a big guy right here. This is a Mothership Mega in Celestial Odyssey. This is quite the mega palette. I love the format of this one. This one isn't my favorite mega palette, but I think a lot of you guys would like it. But it has a lot of neutral tones in there. And then here is the other mega palette that I have. This is the Celestial Divinity. This one is my favorite because you can see all of the purpley tones in here. So highly recommend this one if you're able to get it. Okay, now in the back, these are the coveted palettes. These are very pricey even though this box is falling apart, but these are the palettes from Pat McGrath. So this is the Divine Rose palette. Great if you love neutral tones. I mean, more rosy neutral tones, but they are stunning. Here is the sister to the Divine Rose. This is Divine Rose 2. This one is a little bit more poppy. I love this one. I use this one a lot more than I thought I would. Next up, we have the Utopian Dream. I didn't give this one the love that it deserves, but it really does have some interesting pop of colors and super glittery shades, which I am all for. Then we have one of the OG's Mothership One Subliminal. I'm struggling to open it, but great for work every day and then you can turn it into a nighttime smoky eye really easily i love it because it's really cool toned next up we have sublime sublime has this really fun pop of green but honestly this one isn't my favorite of the pat mcgrath quads this is the bronze seduction i am assuming that this is her best seller that could be very incorrect, but this is a palette that everybody has and that I recommend everybody start with. It's the best, fits a great range of skin tones, really rich, but still quite wearable. Moving on over here, we have the Midnight Sun, and often forgot about palette, but it is quite gorgeous. It's not one of the more popular ones, even on, from my side. I'm quite guilty, but I like the earthy tones in here. It is a surprisingly earthy kind of palette. Very beautiful. Next up, we have the Subversive palette. This is probably my favorite palette. It's one of the most unique ones that you can get your hands on. Take a look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I just think nightlife, smoky eye, lots of versatility in this one. Then the last palette that I have in this drawer is the Mothership Decadence, not my favorite mothership, probably my least favorite because it has no glittery shades, but it still is a beautiful formula nonetheless, and the shades are like liquid gold. That is all that is in my Pat McGrath eyeshadow drawer at the moment. I'm going to fill her back up and we will move on to the next one. drawer down second eyeshadow palette drawer this is also some gold right here this is my dedicated natasha denona palette drawer let's dig in we're going to start off with the minis like i said this is loose organization i have palettes together by brand but then i just kind of throw them in there works for me so first we have the mini metropolis palette really beautiful pretty much all of these shades are in the metropolis palette but this is such an affordable style of eyeshadow palettes that Natasha Denona does. I recommend most of these. So this is the Mini Biba palette. Really pretty neutral peachy tones right here. Not my favorite 
one of these, but still lovely nonetheless. This one, I don't even think you can get it anymore, but this is the Mini Lila palette. Don't recommend this one. The quality on this one is not good. This is one of my favorites. This is the Mini Glam palette. I tend to love cooler toned neutrals, and this definitely fulfills that love of mine. So very much enjoy this one. Then we have the Mini Xenon palette. Well, I do like it. I definitely can't say I use it too often. I think I'm going to use this this week. I have an event that I'm going to that that would fit perfectly. Next, we have the Mini Star palette, which honestly is one of the prettiest colored combinations in these minis right here. I definitely need to reach for this one more. Here is the Mini Retro palette, another really unique one. This looks green, but it pulls very gray on my skin, which I don't like. But other than that, stunning palette. Mini Love is a great one. I use this one a lot when it first launched. Love the quality on this and the colors. Here's a little set that I guess I'm keeping together. This is the Mini Crush. So this came out a year after that Mini Love that I just showed you. And so it's kind of that same Valentine's Day themed colored palette. I don't like this one as much, but it's still nice. The Mini Zendo, I'm not too partial to this one really, if I'm being honest. I just don't love the way that these look or apply. Here, I believe, is the first mini to ever have come out. This is the Mini Sunset palette. So you definitely have to enjoy those warm neutral shades. It's not the best quality, so I don't recommend it. <laughs> this is the Mini Gold, an utterly gorgeous palette. Look at this one. I do recommend this one. I think it is stunning. The last mini that I have is like a baby Biba palette. I got it in a holiday set. It's gorgeous. So it is just the cutest little thing. I have two five pans swimming over here. So this one is the Joya holiday palette. So this launched a few years ago during the holidays. And then in the last year, she actually relaunched these and they are gorgeous. And then here's the other palette from that holiday season. <gasps> mm, I always forget about that. This one does not stay in and it needs to be kept upright. It's a shame because this is like the prettiest shade, but I just broke it. So at least now that it's broken, I won't forget that it's broken. <laughs> Show must go on though. <laughs> so moving over here, we have the Zendo palette. I strongly dislike this palette <laughs> if you watch my videos. Not personally a fan. Then I have the Glam palette, which on the contrary is probably my favorite Natasha Denona palette. If you love Kuto neutrals, I highly recommend this one. We also have the Retro palette, which is a second favorite of mine. This is more obviously, as you can see on the mauve side, really gorgeous, great price point for Natasha Denona, can't complain. Then we have the Sunrise palette, which honestly is not a palette that I reach for very often. I'm not very into warm tones, but the quality on this is nice. Grabbing randomly, continuing on, we have the Pastel palette. This is the newest palette. I don't love it, but I definitely had a lot of fun with it. It was very interesting to play with this palette and give it to Natasha Denona to just come out with interesting color stories. Then we have the Trio Chrome palette, which I think has some of the most interesting mixes of matte shades here. The multi-chromes in the center here are kind of bleh, but the mattes here, incredible, definitely underrated. We have the good old Tropic palette here. I actually really loved my time with this. This one got a lot of negative reviews because this bottom row is trash, but I actually brought this with me on vacation because I love the tone so much. It's an older palette though. Oh, uh, we have the coveted Biba palette, one of the best neutral palettes on the market. You have warm tones, cool tones, you can get gray toned looks with this one and the quality is butter. That's how I would describe this, pure butter. This one was one that did not get enough love in my opinion, the Circo Loco palette. <gasps> Isn't she so fun? Yes, it's very intimidating, but I created some of my favorite looks with this palette, so I gotta give her credit where credit is due. She deserved more love. All right, moving towards the back right here, we have the bronze palette. This is a great one. Just be aware, many of your looks will look the same with this one, but if you like a bronze look, you will like this palette. This is the Safari palette. This is an all matte palette. I mean, it's quite the useful palette to have, not a must have, but I've reached for this here and there. Nothing crazy, but it's useful, that's for sure. 
the Metropolis palette. I am anxiously awaiting for her to come out with another palette of this size and price range. I mean, it's an interesting mix and layout of colors here. It's a little warm for my preferences, but the quality in here is amazing, you all. I think that this is a great starter palette for Natasha. Hiding back here, we have the Love palette. Um, not the best quality from Natasha Denona, I'm not gonna lie, but I love the color story so much that this actually got a ton of use for me. Next up we have the Lila palette and I used to not love this palette and now I love it. <laughs> I mean you have to love the pinky tones but you know it's a great palette. I like it. Then right here this is the eyeshadow palette 10. Not a lot of people have this one. This is an order launch from Natasha Denona. I don't love this you guys. I found it hard to create a look and the quality just didn't seem up to par to me. And then moving in this corner here, I have one of the 228 pan palettes. This is the purple blue. I actually filmed a look with this recently for my YouTube membership. Phenomenal quality, really great looks. But you know what? I feel like this could use an update. Between the mattes and the shimmers, not quite as updated. Let me show you the other 28 pan and then I'll show you the last one. So this is the one that is a little bit more wearable. This is the green and brown palette. Would still love to see an update on this. It seems a little outdated in the colors, but, but the quality is still beautiful and I still love it nonetheless. So these are really an investment palette, but they're great. And the very last palette that you saw is the gold palette. This is a highly coveted palette. She is... She is stunning, isn't she? I've created some of my favorite looks with this palette, so I gotta give her um, credit. She's awesome. All right, let's fill her back up, guys. Are you guys ready for the chaos that is my Tom Ford drawer? As you know, these are all quite pricey palettes, so they deserve their own drawer. I keep their sleeves in here for travel and whatnot in the back. You'll notice I have applicators running rampant. Just ignore that. I'll organize these once I'm done showing you. So we're going to start off with these bigger palettes right here. So this is the Soleil Eye and Cheek palette in the shade 01 Cool. This is an older palette. I got most of these at the cosmetic company store because they're great discounts. Haven't used this one in a while, but... I mean, I love these tones. <laughs> this is gorgeous. This is 05 Soleil d'Ambre. Ignore my pronunciations. This one my mom gave me, so honestly, I haven't used it a lot. But this blush looks beautiful for medium to deep skin tones. Then you have the gorgeous glittery shade. But yeah, this was a hand-me-down from my mom, and I've never used it. Then the next one that we have is Violet Argente. And this one is also a hand-me-down for my mom so I don't think I've ever used this one but these are so pretty I need to use these I don't use these enough okay then I have two more Soleil Eye and Cheek palettes so this one is actually just kidding the shade and illuminate palettes this is intensity 0.5 in rose cashmere I got this on a deep discount absolutely beautiful you guys this is a good wet to dry formula so I reach for these more it's hard to tell with use with these <laughs> because they hold their embossments really well. And then here is the last face and cheek palette that I have. Which one are you? Moonlit Violet. How stunning is this? Now the bronzer in here is a little too deep for me, but you guys know I'm all over these eye shades. Haven't used this much as you can see because I just have the collection that I do, but this is so beautiful. Okay, let's get into my chaotic quad collection. Just like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, I have a dedicated rankings that I did pretty recently with these, and I haven't purchased any new Tom Ford quads lately. So this is Suspicion. This is a beautiful gold palette, great for every day. I like this one a lot. I actually repurchased this one recently. I used to have this in my collection, then I gave it to my mom, and now I have it back. This one is Soleil et Lune, another repurchase. Found this at the CCO for a phenomenal deal. Really fun, icy, wintry palette. This one right here is Honeymoon, a great quad to start off with. It just has these beautiful, rich, ruby tones, and then of course you can still keep it very wearable. Disco Dust is next. I don't love this one, if I'm being honest with you guys. The formula in here doesn't speak to me. Tiger Eye is next. 
This one is really pretty. Not worth the money, but I do like it. Rose Topaz. Again, I got a gorgeous look with this, but I just, I don't know if the price is justified in that shade. Golden Mink. This one is a little bit old, so I feel like I can kind of feel the formula drying out a little bit, but I do like the lid shades in this palette. This one, Lava Luster, is one of the ones that came out during the holidays. It is absolutely one of the best Tom Ford palettes that Tom Ford has ever come out with. If you can get your hands on this, highly recommend. This next one is Metallic Denim. I like it. I don't love it, but it is great quality. This one right here is Titanium Smoke. This is an older, long ago discontinued palette, but this is one of my favorites. The quality on this one is spectacular. Insolent Rose is a beautiful rose palette, a little underwhelming, and I'm somebody who loves rose, but if you can find it at the CCO, I recommend it, but only on discount. Discount. <laughs> Noir Fume. This is one that was disappointing to me because I feel like this color story it had such potential, but it was the quality that failed me on this one. First Frost. This is a great one. This is one of my all-time favorites. It came out during the holiday season, the year before last, and oh my gosh, this embodies Tom Ford to me. This is what I want from Tom Ford and what I think of when I speak of Tom Ford. Here we have Daydream. Daydream is another one of my all-time favorites. Look at this. I love purples, so <laughs> that one has me drooling. This is Arabesque. Arabesque is potentially one of my least favorite palettes from Tom Ford. The color story doesn't speak to me, nor does the quality. Badass. This is terrible quality. These shadows are awfully sticky and patchy, so that's all I have to say about that. This is Metal Lust. Either one or two in my favorite Tom Ford ranking. This is one of his newest palettes that he's come out with. And the quality is divine. And the color story, even more divine. Naked Pink, the worst palette Tom Ford has ever come out with, does not show up. Like, period. Sue Le Sable. Okay, it's fine, but it's definitely not worth the money. Coquette, I like this one. But I don't love it. Again, probably not worth the money, but it's pretty. Tom Ford is very hit or miss if you haven't picked that up. De La Creme. My feelings about it are as basic as it looks. So yeah. Starry Night is really, really pretty. This is long ago discontinued, but I still really, really like this one. All right, last two. We have Seductive Rose. Slightly underwhelming, but it's pretty. And then Rose Prisme, which doesn't give me what I feel like it should give me, but it still, again, is a pretty palette. All right, let's fill this drawer up because those are all of the Tom Fords that I had to talk about. All right, next drawer down, we have some more luxury palettes. As you can see, luxury is at the top and it's slowly going down, but these are all luxury brands still, just multiple. So let's get into it. So this giant palette right here <laughs> is a ginormous colored rain palette, but I keep a bunch of my indie brand individuals here. So I have my Cleonade, my Terra Moon, and my Sydney Grace, Vina. So yeah, this is quite a treasured palette. You have some of the most beautiful pressed shimmery shades in here. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Charlotte Tilbury, which I keep mostly on this side. Very unorganized. <laughs> I use her palettes a lot in my videos, so they kind of go everywhere. This is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. One of my favorites, everything from the packaging to the color story is just a major yes. This is the newest one that came out this holiday season. This is the Smoky Eyes Are Forever. And yeah, she is also very pretty. I recommend getting your hands on these palettes if you can. They're the best value from Charlotte Tilbury. And sometimes I swear the quality is better. This is my first large palette from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Stars in Your Eyes. I like this one because it's purples and warm purples, but yeah, it's quite old, but this one I'm probably going to keep forever for sentimental value. And we have this one right here. This is the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. 
I liked this palette when I got it and I wasn't in love with it though and then I used it as my wedding palette so this will also be in my collection forever. She's gorgeous. This is a palette that I would love to see come back. This is the Icon palette and I think that this has some of the prettiest shades and honestly I feel like I can dupe everything in this palette. It has the typical classic Charlotte Tilbury shades and it's a really beautiful formula as well. Okay we're gonna get random here. I have the, what is this? Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette, which I just saw recently that Charlotte Tilbury actually used this for Britney Spears' wedding makeup. And I don't use this too often, but it still is a really great little travel palette. Then we have this one right here, the Instant Look in a Palette in Sunset Dreamscapes. I ended up falling in love with these Instant Look in a Palettes. There really is nothing better for travel. I try and buy every one she comes out with now because that's how much I like them. They're boring, they're basic, but they're super great for vacations. So this is the instant look of love in a palette in Pretty Blushed Beauty. Again, I went through a major phase with this one. I was obsessed with it. It's a gorgeous palette. Let's start getting into the quads here. This is the Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette in Diva Light. I don't love this one. This is not Charlotte Tilbury's best work, if you ask me. This is the Golden Goddess. One of my favorites, not the best quality, but, but I love the look of this on the eye. Desert Haze, something about these mattes are some of the best on the market. Literal butter, I'm not even kidding. Pure butter. Then we have the Eyes of a Star palette. Not my favorite, but still very nice. Green Lights is a really great one if you love the green tones, which are extremely trendy nowadays. The Vintage Vamp. I'm not a fan of this one, a little patchy. This is the Flawless Eye Filter Palette in Star Aura. It's very pretty on the eyes, but as you can see, it's not going to give you too much depth. Here is Super Blue. Man, I can't believe I've collected so many of these guys. This one is nice. I don't use it too often because I don't reach for blues very often, but nice to have that option. It's a Copper Charge. This is a really great one, really buttery formulation. Here we have Exaggerize. This is a classic from Charlotte delivery though honestly I feel like it's a bit overrated another big guy I was looking for this this is the stone rose beauty this is I think is this the first one that I ever got of these instant look in a palette it's kind of looks the same as the other ones that I've showed you but as you can see this is one that I've definitely bought to travel a lot Definitely the most faded. Dazzling Diamonds Luxury Palette of Pops. I surprisingly like this because normally I'm not a big fan of these pop shades from Charlotte Tilbury. Bella Sophia, I don't really love this one. I feel like this shade's really patchy. Cosmic Pearl, this is, uh, no, wait, no, this is not the one that I like. I don't care for this one. Here's the one that I care for. This is what I thought it was, Celestial Pearl. This is one of my all-time favorite Charlotte Tilbury quads. It embodies the look of Charlotte Tilbury and it has a phenomenal formulation. The Sophisticate, I don't love this one as the other matte one that I have, Desert Haze, but I have it. It's more cool toned. Here is the ever so coveted Pillow Talk, which I think is overrated, not gonna lie. <laughs> the Glamour Muse. This, I don't reach too often. It's not my favorite quality, but Dreamgasm. Again, eh, kind of looks like all of her other palettes. This is Pillow Tuck Dreams. Yeah, this is an amazing palette. This is one of her newest, highly recommended. Buy Your Rose, mine is a little broken, but this is Charlotte Tilbury's best quad that she's ever come out with, hands down. And you can't get it anymore, but it, it's the best, I'm telling you. This is Walk of Shame. This one's nice. It's really, really warm. It's one of my newer ones, so it's one of the ones that I've used the least, but it's pretty. Here is the Pillow Talk of Pops. I don't love the pop formulation, but this does come in handy sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Super Sonic Girl Palette of Pops. I hate this one. This gets all over the face. You can see it's hard pan. Not good. Queen of Glow. This is top three. One of the best ones. Probably the best one that's still available that you can get your hands on. It's gorgeous. This is Uptown Girl. I like this one. Yeah. I like cool tones. I like this shade. This one's good. <laughs> okay, last two Charlotte Tilbury quads, I believe. This one is Mesmerizing Maroon. 
really buttery creamy shades this is a really good one and then finally we have the rock chick this is a really great super cool toned quad from charlotte tilbury i don't race for it too often but it's phenomenal okay i am going to actually try and organize my charlotte tilbury stuff in here and then we'll move on to this side okay. <laughs> All right, let's move a little bit over. We have more miscellaneous luxury brand products. So this is the Gucci eyeshadow palette, the only one they've come out with. This is so bad, but dang, it is so pretty. Not the colors, I'm talking about the packaging. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, this is genuinely one of the worst palettes for this price. All right, so here is a Chanel quad. I have a couple, not many. This is Mediterranean. This one is very, very pretty. I really like this one. This is one of the few Chanel quads that I think I will actually enjoy. Then here are a couple more Chanel quads. So this is Intense. I believe. This one is pretty, definitely overpriced. I wasn't very impressed with this one. And then this one I was even less impressed by. This is Tender is more rose tones. Not my style. The Chanel shadows typically are. I have my Wayne Goss shadows. This is hard to open for some reason. So this is Hermaline. Unfortunately, I found that this one was patchy on me. So I don't love this one. Imperial Topaz. Again, not overly impressed with the quality of this one, but it is pretty. And then Pearl Moonstone, this one, super stunning, but a little bit patchy on the shadow shades there. Mm, I think I'd love to see a reformulation from Wayne Goss. There is another one that I keep in my makeup kit. So that fourth one is my favorite from Wayne Goss, but I keep it in my bridal kit because it's great for brides. Then I have two Marc Jacobs palettes, which I'm telling y'all, the brand must never be coming back if it hasn't come back now. This is Extravagance. This palette is so beautiful. It really is a shame. Ugh, love it though. And then this one is terrific, which is not as pretty as the one that I just showed you, but still. Holding on to these, I'm hopeful. Hiding back here, we have the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 2 palette. I've heard through the grapevine that there might be something somewhat similar to this coming out, but I could be very wrong, so don't hold my word to that, but so happy that I ended up getting my hands on this. I think it's really cool that Danessa Myricks came out with this. It is very, very pricey, but I'm still excited that I got to have this baby because it was very limited. I have this Bobbi Brown palette, which was super underrated. It, it discontinued many years ago, but I do really enjoy this palette. It is a very nice quality purple palette. Didn't get the credit that it deserves, but I still hold on to it because I love Bobbi Brown makeup. This is the Kevin Aquan Nude Pop. This was a hand-me-down for my mom, if I'm being honest. Never really used it, but very pretty. Laura Mercier. This is the Fine Art eyeshadow palette. This was a holiday release. Yeah, kind of expensive for what it is, but there are some really pretty lid toppers. I didn't need this though because I actually did purchase this full canvas eye and cheek essential and... Yeah, this has all of the shades in that little palette, but this is the dumbest packaging ever. As you can see, half his cheek, half his eyes. But this mirror, since it's not connected, the edges can easily nick a palette, which is super annoying. And then towards the back, I mean, I don't know that Scott Burns is really luxury, but... <laughs> He's up there in price. So this is the Glamazon Snatural Palette. And I love this. I love applying this. But I will say these kind of wear down pretty quickly and they lose some of their color. So they don't wear the best, but they definitely apply amazing. I like Snatural a little bit more in terms of wear time. And this has some really great neutral palettes. Really great if you're a starting makeup artist to have these palettes because you get a lot of options. All right, so that is that drawer. So this is my last kind of luxury drawer, if you will, on the top unit. And I have Viseart, Dior, and then I see a Chantecaille hiding back there. So let's see what pops out. We're going to go ahead and get started with my beloved Viseart, which you guys know I am unhealthily 
obsessed with. So right here we have the big guy right here. This is the Grande Pro Volume 1. She is used, she is abused. I used this in my makeup kit for a while. It's been passed on to me for personal use. Yeah, Viseart has some of the best mattes, so I use this all the time. And if you didn't know, Viseart has a Grande Pro Volume 2 and Volume 3. Volume 2 I'm not as in love with because it's it's a lot of shimmers and I don't feel Viseart has the best shimmer formulation or at least they didn't at the time that this launched but still useful. I still will pair it with Volume 1 from time to time but it's a little better in my opinion to pair with Volume 3 again. This was limited edition and you will see why as soon as I open it. So this one is very, very bright. Definitely <laughs> for the daring. Had to get this as well. Love my Viseart Grande palette. And boy oh boy do I have quite the collection of Viseart palettes. A lot are discontinued, a lot are still available. This is the Liaison palette. This is such a good one. This is what started it all. This is one of the best purple palettes and you cannot get it anymore unfortunately. The Libertine palette. This is how I first got connected to Viseart and Muse Beauty Pro. They saw my review on this palette so this started a really great relationship with Muse Beauty Pro by them seeing me review this so I have to hold on to that one. Then sitting on top here we have the Violette Eton Dew, a gorgeous gorgeous purple palette from Viseart. I really do like this one as well. The great corresponding matte tones here. This is the Kashmiri Fate palette, another favorite of mine from the brand. If you love cool tones, absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite. And then dark edit here. These are all towards the front because they're my favorites. This one is great in the fall time and there really is something special about the shimmers in here. So this is one of the special ones if you ask me from Viseart. Then hiding back here, this is the Bijouette palette. This came out during the holiday season. They killed it this holiday season with their launches. This one is really fun jewel tone shades. Here is a very old palette hiding over here. Let me show you. This is one of their theory palettes in minx this is the first palette that i ever used from viseart i was absolutely struck by the amazing quality of viseart i couldn't believe it so this is a very special palette this is a paris love letter honestly one of my least favorite palettes from viseart this shade is no longer i had to throw it away it was so soft it would explode everywhere but yeah this one just didn't have the great quality that viseart usually has i struggled with that one here is the paris edit this is another really fantastic one that I highly recommend. You have these really great mauve cool tones. I have a type, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. This one right here is Rose Edit. Not one of my favorites. I don't reach for this one too often. I did bring it on vacation with me a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie, it was really nice. To Even though I say I don't love it, I certainly have gotten use out of it. I have more little mini palettes like that, but let's get into the quads because I see I have them. This is Bullion right here here. This is very, very nice. I have some different one of these quads in my filming area that I might have to pull out towards the end that haven't made it into the drawer yet because I'm still testing. But anyways, this one is gorgeous. This came out during the holiday season. Praline. This one is also very gorgeous. Oh, looks like this one exploded a little bit. That's not good, but really great everyday colors. Lapis. I don't use these colors very often, but the quality on this one was really nice. Frambois. We have some classic kind of pinkish raspberry tones from Viseart. Great to bring these to travel. This one right here, Lilas. If you love the cool tones, this is a fun one to have. Very gray, very unique. Chocolat. This one's brown and warm tones right here. I don't use this one too often. Garnet. This one is like super nice for the holidays. Just those classic kind of holiday coppers and reds. This is Peridot. This one is a fun one. I love greens. These are like beautiful holiday greens. Yeah, I definitely have more quads, but they're brand new, so they're not in this drawer yet. I know this is ridiculous. We have more palettes hiding back here. This is Milieu right here. This, you will see, I have them in these big uh, panned ones as well. This is not the same one, but they're the exact same colors as existing colors from this line, but they're exactly half the price and half the size. Maybe it's not half, but anyways, it's a great way to get these guys, which are like 
80 90 dollars at a more affordable price so this is the milieu one i also have editorial brights which i also have that full size one of muse beauty pro sent me this one so that's why i have it in this size as well and then i think this is the last one that i have in these pettits palettes this is the warm pettits petty sorry yeah this is all matte warm shades really great to have for travel to not carry too much with you and then this one right here is the spritz edit palette not one i reach for too terribly much due to the warmth but it still is nice warm edit this is definitely an older one from them very very warm so you know i don't reach for it but good quality and then this is solstice solstice is very pretty i've actually used this one quite a lot i've had it for a while i do recommend this one if you can get your hands on it still this next one is which one are you soleil this is one of my favorite of this style of palettes i love that you can get a sunset eye with this one this one right here is midsummer i've used this one a lot too this one is pretty a bit underwhelming but still very useful a few more of these style guys hiding back here this one is fun 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 i brought this i think i went to tampa last year and this is what i brought this is the shoo shoo palette for a pop of color i love that you have these oranges and then the pinks this is fun and bright it was definitely a summer collection launch and then we have z apricotine i believe this one is yes i got that right uh, again another great wearable one i traveled with this palette as well as the shoo shoo on the same trip and then we have Etoile. This one came out over the holiday season and ugh, killed it this holidays. Look at this. This is such a fun, smoky eye palette. Okay, let's get into the bigger 12 pm palettes. This is kind of what made Viseart famous, if you don't know. I've collected a lot. I love these. I've switched many of these in and out of my bridal kit. This one is Bridal Satin. It has some very pretty shades. I actually used this recently for a bridal tutorial that I filmed. And then we have the Milieu. You saw that I had a mini version of this earlier that's a nice one i also had a mini version of this one which is editorial brights really great staple palette if you're just looking for a palette to introduce some matte colorful shades this one right here is the warm matte so i had the mini of that this is a collaboration palette that Alcone put out with Vizzy Art. And these are all pre-existing shades, but I really did enjoy the color combo here. I bought this at a makeup show. This one right here is the Cool Matte 2. I've used this one quite a bit, honestly. It's a very unique array of colors. This is the classic from Vizzy Art that made the brand popular, Neutral Matte right here. So it has pretty much every neutral matte shade that you're ever going to need. This is one that Muse Beauty Pro put together for me when Viseart first launched their individual shadows. So these are just random pre-existing shades from Viseart in one palette. This is one that I'm so sad got discontinued, the Koi palette. I thought that this palette was so universal, a beautiful array of colors. I loved layering this over bases. And then the last Viseart palette that I have for today's video is the Sultry Muse, which is one of my favorites of their 10 pin palettes in terms of getting a complete look. Now, all of these are shimmers, but I really believe you can create a full look with this palette. Let me fill her up now. Moving on to this side of the drawer, I have mostly Dior shadows which again, like Tom Ford are hit and miss. This one right here is Mineral Rose and I will say it is a big whopping waste of money. I'm gonna just throw these over here. Then I have Nightbird. This one is a fun one. I really like this one. I think this is unique for Dior. I'm glad they created this one. Early Bird did not like this one. This one launched with Nightbird, but this one was really bad. So <laughs> I don't like this one. Then we have Blue Beat. This is an older one from Dior. This one is quite fun. Not the most amazing quality, but I should reach for this one. It's been a while. This one right here is Coral Glow. Another waste of money right here. This was a mistake, that's for sure. <laughs> Soft Cashmere is, I think, my favorite from Dior altogether. In terms of like, this is just a really great wearable color story, and it also is super nice quality. Then we have a Romantic Voyage. This one is very pretty as well. I do like this one a lot. This next one is Pink 
vibration this is an older one but i had fun with this one this is when i first started getting into dior that i purchased this one and then i picked up organza this one was a disappointment to me i wasn't too impressed with this one Let's see house of dreams i like this one this one was a holiday palette you can see the embossments are also really pretty so i do like that one pure petals right here i'm not really a fan of this this is actually one of the worst ones now that I'm thinking about it. Cruise look. I really despise this color story. This that would give me a whole lot of nothing. Blue velvet. I was a little underwhelmed by this one, honestly. I had higher expectations for it and it let me down a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Then I have triple bloom. This one, as you can see with all of the other trios, I do not like. Atelier Dore. This one is really nice. It's again from that same holiday collection with beautiful embossments and a pretty good formula not Dior's best but really good still pink sakura absolutely gorgeous this is one of my favorite quints that they launched really beautiful hope line this is a newer one I was a little underwhelmed by it, it still is very very pretty though not gonna lie but it still is not one of my favorites sprint this is an older one it's supposed to come out in 2020 during the Olympic and then it still did come out in 2020 but then the Olympics didn't happen so <laughs> unfortunately it was an awkward launch but I do like this palette I think it's really pretty and then this one is Mirage Mirage I do not like and do not recommend and then the, I think this is the last Dior palette yes this one is really nice this is a backstage eye palette this is plum neutrals this is a very very nice palette it's a different formulation than the quince but I think it is a successful formulation and I love the packaging as well and then the last little random guy I have here is a shot Kai palette this is the walk for giants safari eye trio mm, mm, i don't like this one i think shantakai generally speaking they create great products but they're overpriced this is one of the few shantakai products that i did not like let's put her back i think i'm gonna do like i did with tom ford and flip these so that i can read the name problem is these are like not flat so they spin everywhere all right, much better. That is that drawer. All right, we are now moving on to the second set of drawers. And here we have really high-end stuff. You know, not quite luxury, but on the more pricey side of high-end. So I have brands like Huda, Artist Couture, Patrick Ta Beauty, Melt, all of that good stuff. This drawer is um, quite the unorganized mess. So let's get into it. First palette right here is Patrick Ta, which is quite the trendy brand right now. This is the newest palette, the Major Dimension 2 Rose palette. Absolutely gorgeous. You guys know I love this. Hiding over here is the first Major Dimension palette. This one is more warm and neutral. I don't like this one as much as the Rose, surprisingly, but still do like it of course here's some artist couture palettes we have the supreme nudes this is the first palette to come out one of my all-time favorite neutral palettes it really is the business i'm telling you <laughs> and then this is the newest artist couture palette to come out this is not the business i do not like this palette it's a shame because the color story is so beautiful it's even more beautiful in person if you haven't seen it in person yet over to the side here here I have the Supreme Bronze Palette. This one is also just delicious. I really like this one. It's a little cooler than the Supreme Bronze. Here I have the Hindash Monochromance Palette. This it's been a roller coaster ride with this. I've liked it. I've disliked it. I just think it's overpriced. It's not worth the money, but surely is beautiful to look at. That's for sure. I also have the original Hindash palette right here. Again, it's not really a palette I reach for, kind of boring, but makes sense for Hindash. I like this better than the new palette. This is in the wrong drawer, but we'll go with it. ABH palettes are in the next drawer, but this is my favorite ABH palette. Well, one of them. She has a lot of good ones. But this is the Primrose palette. Absolutely stunning. People love to talk not good about this palette, but I mean, the quality on this was just superb, so I love this one okay let's get into Huda Beauty because you can see I have quite the collection of Huda Beauty I love to collect the palettes so I have the desert dusk palette here I got this on a 
stupidly amazing deal over the holiday season so this is a new one i threw out my old one i really like this palette but it does not have a very long lifespan so just keep that in mind here is the new nude palette this one is very very pink but it is very very pretty this is a great one i think for those with medium to deep complexions or if you just like a look with a lot of depth this is awesome i really do like this one i love this one over the holiday season except for like yeah <laughs> except for that shit. this one i think i got it for like eleven dollars i feel like huda has the best sales over the holiday season simply could not believe the price that i got this at i actually never owned this my mom owned this and i loved it but never had a need to buy it and then i saw it for eleven dollars and i was like okay you're mine this is the rose quartz palette this is one of my all-time favorites and this is the one that most recently came out. I just think it is so beautiful. Nobody puts together a palette like Huda. I think she does a phenomenal job. And then my other favorite big one right here. This one and Rose Quartz kind of switch between my favorite. This is Mercury Retrograde. But this one is also beautiful. It's just a little bit more colorful, but... I have my ring light behind me so you can see how beautiful these look in the light. Okay, let's get into all of my littler palettes that I have scattered. Again, these are all super duper random. We have the neon palette. I don't really care for this one. And we have a few other neon palettes. I don't even know which one this is. Pastel green, I think. I think this is the pastel orange. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like any of these in the neon collection so there was like a lawsuit with this and these were discontinued and you could get your money back the neon pink palette i liked this one i think i can't remember okay then i have some older ones this is the amethyst obsessions palette i really love the tones of purple in here i feel like they're unique kind of like grape colored here is the emerald obsessions also really a unique color story haven't seen many palettes come out that look like this this is the ruby obsessions not my favorite palette i feel like it pulls more pink as opposed to ruby on the eyelid but this one is quite old this is from one of their first launches of these nine panners mob obsessions extremely boring but i just feel the need to hold on to it i don't know i like it we have the caramel brown palette a little too warm for me the quality in these particular palettes weren't the best from huda we have this one is chocolate brown this one is a little bit more up my alley but again this whole collection was average for me this is the toffee brown this one i felt like was a little bit more unique compared to all of the other palettes which you can see we have a lot of we'll do the haze palettes now this is the purple haze palette this one is pretty i haven't reached for this one a lot but i forgot how pretty that one is this is the khaki haze obsessions palette this one was a little underwhelming i had higher hopes for it but still nice all of these are nice nonetheless this is the sand haze palette also a very stunning one pretty basic but i like it oh here's an older one that i didn't grab the topaz obsessions i like this one i feel like the quality on these older ones are better than the newer ones in some scenarios smoky obsessions is one of my all-time favorites there was a black here but again these seem extra creamy wild python this one is a fun one here is wild jaguar lots of cool tone neutrals in this one this one is also very very pretty the last one in that wild launch is wild chameleon these were a fun launch i like this collection the wild ones then we have the nudes so nude medium all of these i think are some of the best of the nine panners in the nude collection so you can't go wrong really this is nude light which looks like this this one is really nice for spring nice and light and airy then we have nude rich which is a mess as you can see this was one of the only palettes that we had a casualty when i was moving i tried to press the broken shadows in but obviously it's still a little messy it's because i missed it and left it in one of these drawers during the move so it was like moving around and not surprisingly shattered but it doesn't look that bad i repressed it and then the last couple nine panners these are brand new from huda this is 
the color block blue green palette i like this one this one's really fun the cake liner is also awesome the other one that launched is the color black purple orange this one i did not like though so definitely inconsistent not a fan of this one and i think this one i'm not sure if this is even supposed to be in this drawer but this is the master metallics palettes i think the matte one if i didn't end up putting it up i have it in a drawer for a video for a while so it might be in my other part of my collection but this one is really really pretty i love the way that these look i need to reach for this one more okay and then i think these should mostly be melts unless there's anybody hiding this is the melt amor y mariposas palette i got this one in pr and and so I'm so grateful for that because this palette is so nice. It's not my typical kind of color story I go for, so I'm not in love with the colors in here. But the quality on this one is really nice, and there's a lot of meaning and backstory to this palette. Then we have the Gemini palette. This is one of my favorites. It's definitely one of the prettiest color stories as well, if you ask me. Brunette. This is a hidden gem on the makeup market. It is an extremely underwhelming color story, but the quality of these mattes are just incredible incredible if you're an everyday neutral makeup wearer this is a great one i love it and we have the gemini 2 this one is a bit grungier than i prefer the quality is really great but they pull a lot darker on the eyelids this is definitely in the wrong drawer this is not melt this is the urban decay wild green palette so i'll put this in the correct drawer after this but um yeah i wasn't in love with this one melt she's in parties palette this one is also a really nice one a bit grungier than what i'm used to but great quality we have the smoke sessions palette this one just really gorgeous overall i was a teacher when i bought this so i didn't do a review on it because i did not want to review a smoke sessions palette but yeah i like this one i like the color story and then this one i never ended up returning but it was return worthy, not good. This is the Mary Jane palette. So the color story on this is stunning, but the quality of these shadows are a hot mess express. All right, let's put her back together. You'll notice as we work our way down, <laughs> these drawers start to get really cramped. So there's a lot of palettes put into these. So I'm gonna start off with NARS because I actually think I want to put NARS in this drawer to kind of free up some space. So I have the NARS Orgasm X palette. I love this little guy. This is such an underrated quad. I don't even know that you can get it anymore, but I used this nonstop. We also, this is the NARS Summer Unrated palette so this is one of the newer palettes from NARS I actually ended up really liking this one I thought the color story was very very boring but the quality on this was super reliable here is another NARS quad this is the Taj Mahal not my favorite I feel like the quality was not up to snuff with NARS on this one this is the NARS extreme effects palette this one is a little bit older, I think from the prior holiday season, not this most recent holiday season. I did not need this when I bought it. I don't know why I bought it. And then I have this one right here. This one came out during this holiday season, the Climax palette. Super duper unique. It's sold out. I think, you know, some of these shades are a little harder to work with. But the tones in here are super unique. So I'm going to pop these in here. I definitely have another quad from NARS, but it must be not here. I don't know. Let's get into ABH. I have a lot of my ABH palettes here. So we'll start off with the classic soft glam. These are a lot of throwback palettes, you guys. I love this one. Okay, and then we have the Amrezi palette. Ooh, this one is pretty. I never really got too much use out of this one, and I don't know why, because the colors look gorgeous. And the packaging also. The infamous subculture palette. This is from the original launch. I believe the formula may or may not have been uh, improved, but what a beautiful color story, right? Yes, I saw why people hated the formula, but I always managed to make it work. This is the coveted Jackie Ina palette, which didn't get enough moment in the sunshine, if you ask me, because this really is a beautifully curated palette. 
Here's an old one from a holiday season years ago. This is the Prism palette. I had fun with this. I bought this when my makeup collection was a lot smaller. So I actually ended up, even though it doesn't look like it, but I have many memories of using this one a lot. The Carly Bible palette, which got no airtime or screen time if you ask me, because this is when ABH went a little crazy with all of the palette launches. But this one is really beautiful for spring as well. I didn't even get to use it because of all the launches coming out at the time but it's a gorgeous palette here is the norvina palette you know this one is nice as well for the spring and summer not one that i've used enough but really gorgeous i mean all of them are i need to get some new adjectives <laughs> the riviera palette this was a short limited edition summer palette i actually had a good time with this when it first launched it's a little out there the uh, mattes are very bold but yeah, I feel happy that I collected this. And then we have the Soul Tree palette, which, oof, give it to me, okay? This is like probably one of my favorites of the ABH palettes in the style. It is so, so nice. The Cool Tone Neutrals. I also have Modern Renaissance, but that is in my makeup kit because I use it a lot for bridal makeup. I have more ABH palettes hiding back here. So we have the Norvina Volume 5, I believe this is. Yeah, this is like one of my all-time favorite ABH palettes. I know it's not from like the regular ABH line. It's the Norvina line, but this is the ultimate purple palette. This one is Volume 2. I haven't collected all all of these the most recent Norvina palette that came out I didn't like the color story of but I can't believe I purchased this one because this is not my kind of color story either but I just I love these big Norvina palettes I feel like the quality on them is superb this is volume one again really crazy bright out there color stories but there's something special about the quality of these throw these back here here is the Norvina volume four this is one of my least favorites I feel like the quality of this one wasn't as good, but it's still a great color story right up my alley, if you know me. And then we have the volume three, right? Yes. Love the butterflies. Very, very warm and like neon warm. And I forgot I had this. Well, I've been hiding this because I stole this from my mom. <laughs> this is a piece of art right here. The Makeup by Mario palette with ABH. God, this is so old, but gotta keep it. Gotta hold on to it. Continuing on, I have a couple Lunar Beauty items. This is uh, Manny Emiway's brand. This is the Moonspell palette. This one is so gorgeous. I think he did such a good job with the color story on this. I also had to pick up Moonspell Volume 2 because I was obsessed with Volume 1 and I still have the box. So this one has red packaging and super purple and warm honestly you guys i think i only got to use this one like once because it came out over the holidays i'm gonna have to grab for this one here are my m cosmetics palettes i really like their eyeshadows this is the divine skies it's a really pretty pinky color oh i lied this was magic hour that pinky one this is da vinci from their most recent collection and then we have rodin right here which again really great neutral tones ah here's my makeup by mario palettes i knew i had more i just didn't know where i was keeping them this is the matte master mattes palette this one is super popular on tiktok i'm so spoiled since i have abh i don't care for this one but <laughs> this is good if you don't want the abh one and then i'm just gonna pop the other one down here i have the fenty beauty Bomb Posse eyeshadow palette. I do not like this at all. I think this is a really bad eyeshadow palette. <laughs> I have this one from Sephora Collection. What are you called? The I Love palette in medium cool. This is very, very nice. Great to travel with. I liked this one. This is one of the few Sephora Collection items that I own. Then I have this palette from BK Beauty, which is Lisa J's makeup brand. This is the True Beauty palette. You get to support a really great cause with this, and in my opinion, 
a fantastic creator. There's going to be another one of these swimming about because I definitely have another one, but this is from one size. This is the golden cocoa palette. I'm going to keep my eyes open because there is another one somewhere. I have this palette from Tarte. This is the Rainforest of the Sea Foil Finger Quad. This formula from Tarte is so nice. It's like a cream shadow formula. I love it. I have this one from MAC. I mean, the packaging of this palette is incredible, even though mine is ridiculously dirty at the bottom. This is the Natural Vice eyeshadow palette. I had originally bought this to use in my makeup kit, and it didn't exactly end up working out that way, but I like this. It feels very nostalgic for me to hold on to this. And then the last two palettes that I have in this drawer are from Rare Beauty. So these came out a couple years ago during the holiday season, and these are an amazing formula. I wish they would expand on this formula because their new formula is not good, but this is Confident Energy. I believe you can still purchase these, and they're so good, you guys. Super underrated, and this is Magnetic Spirit. They're an all-shimmer formula, but they look so beautiful on the eyelids. So that is that for this drawer. I may move some things around because, you guys, when I moved here, I didn't organize these drawers. I just put the palettes in with brands by brand and I never sat down and organized it like this. So I'm having a good time doing this. Because we are now starting at the bottom. So this next drawer is a little over packed. So I might move some things up to this drawer. We're gonna do that. Okay. So immediately I see another one size palette. So this will go up. This is the Patrick Star or excuse me, one size visionary palette. This was in the original launch of One Size and was totally underrated. I think this is a great formula and a great everyday palette. Tati Beauty, I have the Volume 1 palette here. I guess we'll never get another one of these, so I'm definitely keeping this. I also have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Lux Legacy palette. This was in collaboration with her mom. This is a solid eyeshadow palette. It's not one of my all-time favorites. It's a newer palette, but it is a nice neutral palette. Here's the other one size quad. This is in the shade Copper Cider. These are a little bit harder to blend, but once they're on the eye, they look gorgeous. I have this guy from Tarte. This is the Tartlet Juicy palette. I think Tarte's eyeshadows are overrated, honestly. I'm not a big fan of their formula. It's a fine palette. I always think in terms of bridal, it's great for bridal, but not one of my all-time favorites. I have some KKW Beauty palettes, which honestly, I hardly ever used. I bought these because my friend Tara Lynn loved KKW Beauty. And I got these on sale and they are so pretty. It's Cherry Blossom and then this other one is just the classic eyeshadow palette. I really would love to see and hope that she does end up coming back out with the line because I just love the nude aesthetic. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it, okay? Here is one of my Florisys eyeshadow palettes. I think Florisys is such a treat to own, you guys. How beautiful is this? I wear this when I want to feel fancy. I don't even know the name at the top of my head, but you can see how stunning this is. Let's see, I have a Dose of Colors palette. This is an oldie but a goodie. This was the Friendcation palette in collaboration with Desi and Katie. I still use this palette. It is so old, but I think it's such a great curation of colors for going out at night. Not that I do that, but <laughs> I use it a lot in college, so that's definitely how I know it's old. This is Dominique Cosmetics Rustic Glam. I've kind of fallen off on following the brand with their launches, but I do really like their palettes. This one is a fun, unique one. And then I also have the Berries and Cream. Has anybody else fallen off of this brand? I really did like the palettes, and I know they're coming out with a lot of stuff still. I have the Lime Crime Venix XL, and this one is very pink. Did you guys see they're kind of rebranding to become a more affordable brand? I find that to be very interesting. Venus XL2, in my opinion, is one of the most unique palettes on the market. I highly recommend. I don't even know if you can buy this anymore, but it's super duper unique. 
Okay, I have this palette from Nabla. This is the Dreamy palette. I think Nabla has a really great eyeshadow formula. This is the Cutie palette in Nude. This one I was underwhelmed with. I thought I would love it, but I didn't end up being obsessed with the formula. Then here is the Platinum Cutie palette, which is really, really glimmery and pretty. So, love that. I think this Nomad palette is in the wrong drawer, but this is the Tokyo palette. I can't get myself to get rid of this one. It is so pretty, but I do not like the formula of this at all, but everything about it is so cute. And then Sigma palettes, I don't care for their formula. This is the Enchanted palette, but they have some of the best color curations, but I find this formula hard to work with. This is the Dream palette. Now this one, I actually really enjoy the formula of. Something about it to me is just better than other palettes that I worked with from them and you get a lot of great options and colors here. I have the Cinderella palette which shamefully I've only used once and I feel like the one time I used it I didn't give it a fair chance so I definitely need to use it more because look at that color story. And then we have the Corderosa. Not a huge fan of this formula. It's okay. I can make it work but I think Sigma is a bit overpriced. I like Sigma products. I think they come out with a lot of cool stuff, but I only recommend you buy Sigma on sale. That's what I'm going to say about that. All right, I have a couple indie brands in here. Definitely going to need to do some switching around. This is the Adept Cosmetics and Heather Austin palette. I mean, Adept kills their shimmer formula. I think they could work on their mattes, but I mean, if you need reflective eyelid colors, this is fantastic. Here is the Cleonade and Emily Violet Marie Dragon Fruit Palette. A little bit neon, a little bit out there. I don't love the color story of this. The quality is just superb that I don't even care what the color story is because it's Cleona. And then here is a palette of some of my Terra Moons shades. These are delicious. Terra Moons is definitely one of my favorite indie brand when it comes to eyeshadows. Pretty darn incredible. Okay, and then I have Urban Decay and Too Faced hiding over here. So we have the Naked Wild West. I not, am not a fan of Urban Decay, but I always end up eventually purchasing their stuff some way or somehow. This is an okay palette. Nothing unique about it, but we have the Naked Heat. I bought this in college when it was a hot, hot topic. It got a lot of use for me back then. I look a hot mess. Pay no attention to me. I was feeling lazy this morning. <laughs> but anyways, I used this a ton when I was in college but good old naked three. Oh my gosh this is ancient the mirror fell out can't get myself to get rid of this one I love this color story I think it's great here is the naked cyber palette what new packaging unfortunately I cannot stand the formula in this one Okay, and then here's the last Urban Decay palette. This is the Stone Vibes palette. They really did it with the packaging and it looked really cool, but I also hated the, uh, the formula on this one. So yeah, this one goes in the back. <laughs> and then here are Too Faced palettes. So I have the Teddy Bear palette. Too Faced is totally my guilty pleasure, I'm not gonna lie. I skipped out on the last few palettes, but I do like the style of palette and the quality in this one in particular is very nice. I also have the Pumpkin Spice palette. I buy their holiday palettes every year, so I have a whole collection of them. They're good quality, good enough for me to keep me coming back and buying them, but not amazing. Cinnamon Swirl. And they all are kind of a variation of the same palette. That's for sure. Gingerbread extra spicy. And then we have gingerbread spice. So definitely repetitive, but these are a novelty purchase for me. So I'm unapologetic about that. I'm not going to organize this drawer completely just yet because I want to do a switcheroo of some of the brands that I have. But let's move on to the next. Here I'm starting to really put some of my indie brands down here. See I have this Sigma New Mod palette definitely in the wrong drawer. I do really like this one. Again, buy it on sale, but this is a decent formula from Sigma. I'm just going to pop this over here. I have the Sydney Grace 
B Mine palette right here, an absolutely stunning and very, very high quality palette. I really enjoy this one. I have another Nabla palette here. This is the side-by-side -side nude palette. I went through a phase with this one where I was obsessed with it. It's a great palette. This is Muse Beauty, which has since been renamed. I think it's K-Love Beauty now. This is their first palette when they first launched the Impressionism palette. This is a really nice palette. Okay, I have a number of Ace Beauté palettes all in their boxes. Let me take them out. So this is the Oceanic palette. Oh my gosh, Ace does a great job with their color stories. Um, here is the Flare palette. So this is what this one looks like, really fun. I'm gonna have to film a few looks with these. I also have the Paradise Fallen palette. So I'm gonna show you this one. This is an older formulation. They've since reformulated. I have the reformulation here, but I don't feel like opening it. So I'm gonna show you that. They look the exact same. I also have the Classical Paradise. Again, I haven't tried the new formulation version. I meant to do that a long time ago, shame on me but that's what that color story looks like. So here is what this one looks like. So beautiful in pink. And here is Slice of Paradise, which again, insane color story. You'll see I have a couple Alamar cosmetic palettes. It's different now that I live in Miami. This is a Miami-based company, but this is the very first palette that they came out with. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the brand from this palette. And then here is Volume 2, which is also very fun. Here is one of the Kimchi Chic palettes that I have. I love Kimchi Chic's eyeshadow palettes. This is the Virgin Mojito, an underrated brand. It's very affordable and great quality. All right, let's dig into Kaleidos first. I have a ton of Kaleidos palettes. So this is the Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze, a little bit more wearable. <laughs> and then I have Futurism Electro Turquoise. Pretty insane, right? I don't think you can get these anymore, but Kaleidos just kills it. Here are more Futurism palettes. So this is the Sashimi City. Not my most favorite palette, but all of these are phenomenal quality. I'm only speaking on the color story. Here is Lunar Lavender. Seriously, I don't know how Kaleidos does it. So amazing. Astro Pink. This one is fun. Sci-Fi Green. This one is super trendy. VR Neon, which is exactly as it sounds. This is a great summer palette. Mm, I'm going to keep this in mind for my video. I also have this one from Kaleidos. This is the Flower Punk. A little bit different style packaging but very good as per usual no surprise there then i have some of the big palettes so this one i can't even remember the name of this the escape pod which looks like this i think that this is such a fun palette this is another good one for summer and then we of course also have the, the club nebula which was angelica nikis palette also an insanely amazing palette on this section over here, you'll see I have my insane Odin's Eye collection, which is one of my all-time favorite brands. We'll start off with Angie's other collab, the Hella palette. This is the newer one. I mean, hello, gorgeous. I'm going to hide these back here. I'm trying to come up with a good way to store these. Um, this is a highlighter palette, so this got put into the wrong drawer, so... Let me move that. All right, so we have the Alva 2 eyeshadow palette. This one is really fun and colorful. Odin's Eye gets better and better. Every palette they come out with is better quality. This is the original Alva palette right here. Then we have the Norn's Eye palette. This one is a little bit more grungy and wintry. That's all. What's this? Is this another highlight palette? I did not do a good job with reorganization. This is the original Freya palette, which looks like this. This is the only ever miss from Odin's Eye. And it was a launch that happened such a long time ago. They have definitely improved everything about the brand. Soman eyeshadow palette. They recently came out with Soman too, but I've actually really liked this one. Not the best quality, but still 
an amazing palette and uh, we got a lot to go through you guys this is the saga of freya palette which looks like this so this is a double layered palette i don't necessarily like this style of packaging so i don't really use it this is the annette's makeup corner giant wolves palette all of these in this collection i'm going to show you them all were incredible like this one right here is the fancy face I mean, all these are just amazing quality, everything. And then we have the Red Dragon palette. So these are my all-time favorite palettes from Odin's Eye. Angelica's palette is also included in this. It's just a little bit of a different style, but so, so good. Those did not deserve to be limited edition. I need them permanent. Then we have the Saga of Freya Chapter 2, Cat with Golden Carriage. This always catches people's eyes in my TikTok because of how pretty it is. And we have Chapter 1, Tears of Freya. Do I have a comment on it still? And this one is what this looks like. I don't use this one as much. And then we have a bunch of littles over here. So we have the Erd palette, which looks like this. And then this one is the mini sky palette. Of that nice double pop over there in the center. Verdandi. I think this one is a bit of an odd color combo, but go off. And then we have, to finish off this drawer, the Alba 2 palette. All right, so that is everything in these drawers. I'm going to get to work on organizing this. All right, so this one is probably the most overloaded drawer. I can already tell a number of those are going to end up having to go up here. This got messy. <laughs> so like, for example, here are two more Kaleidos palettes. So this one, I can't even remember the name of these because they don't have names. These are from their newest collection. I think this one is Cold Brew. They're super good, you guys. We have some more Florisys right here. You guys know I think Florisys is just an incredibly gorgeous and luxurious brand. So I have that. And then this is the other one from Florisys that I have. It's are in Chinese. So I mean, I am half Chinese technically, but I, I can't read Chinese. So then here's the other Florisys palette that I have. Now, a more kind of a affordable version that's similar to Florisys is ZC. And they have really neat items as well. So this is the Alice and Wonderland collaboration. Here is another ZC palette. I should have others swimming about. But this was in collaboration with the British Museum. The quality on these are surprisingly good. And this drawer is a chaotic mess, so we definitely cannot go by brand. I have another Nomad palette. This is the White Snow Lodge. So this is a newer palette from them. I don't think it's the newest. They just came out with the more new one, but I like this. Here is another Odin's Eye. So this is the Alva 2 Mini Forest palette. Ooh, this one is pretty. This one is one of my favorites of these. I have the Tiny Marvels palette with Sydney Grace. This is the palette that our sweet Mel Thompson collaborated with. We'll always, always have this palette, of course. Here's another Florisys palette that I have. Ooh, look at that glimmer. And this is what this one looks like. So this one has a lot of warm tones. I just can't get over the embossment on these. Here are a couple more ZC palettes that they did in collaboration with the British Museum. So this is a pretty mauve palette. And then I have this one as well. I have some Maven Beauty hiding here. So this is one of Fashion Nova's makeup brands. They just launched Nova Beauty, but Maven Beauty? So underrated, you guys. They legitimately have really great products. I love these little quads. They're organized by like medium tone shimmers, mid tone, cool tone, dark mattes, medium mattes. These are super awesome. So these are more indie shadows. These are from the brand Touch of Glam Beauty. They are incredible. And then we also have this one right here, which has, I think these are all of my Sydney Grace individuals. These need to be bumped up. 
to a higher quality drawer because those are not cheap. <laughs> and then I have, these are Sydney Grace's palettes that were done in collaboration with Temptalia. These are amazing. I think the color organization of them was a bit weird to where almost all of the palettes kind of looked the same, but I'm happy I bought all three because of course they're Sydney Grace's great quality and they have a beautiful beautiful color story. This unfortunately is from a brand that no longer exists. Brand's name is Beauty by Stony, and this is the Coco palette. This one, when I film my declutters, I think this one might need to be decluttered. It's nice. I'm just sad that the brand is no longer around. We have this one from Sydney Grace. This is the Enduring Love palette. Love this one. Cool tone neutrals. I'm in there like swimwear. And then this, I believe, is the Ofra and Samantha March collaboration palette. Oops. <laughs> Beautiful mauve tones in this one. So I have that. I have the Rem Beauty eyeshadow palettes, which I do not like, as you know. So this is the Midnight Snack palette. And then we also have the Go Go Boots palette, which looks like this. This is the Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics. It's freaking bats. Another indie brand collaboration. I believe this shade got a little messed up during the move. Nothing crazy, but this is such a fun, inspiring color story. I'm obsessed with that palette. This is in the wrong drawer. It's supposed to be in the one below, but this is the BH Cosmetics. Hanging in Hawaii. You know how I feel about BH Cosmetics formulas. A high-end formula at an affordable price, so excited that they're still around. And I believe the rest, unless they are misplaced, these should all be ColourPop shadows. And my ColourPop shadow collection is insane. I've been asked, will you do a rankings? I don't think I have the capacity because <laughs> there's just so much and ColourPop discontinues everything. But let's go over these. One of my favorites is definitely the Stone Cold Fox palette. My cool tone neutral girls. This is the palette for you. One of my favorites. We're going to switch it up. We're going to put ColourPop on this side of the drawer. This is the Bare Necessity palette. A really, really great neutral, neutral palette. Here is the It's a Mood palette. I really like this one as well. Dual tones. Fade into Hue. Not the easiest formula to work with, but certainly a very useful palette to have if you're thinking of incorporating color. Rock Candy. This is a newish one. I didn't get to use it a bunch, but I really like the color story on this. And then the last one is the So Jaded palette. This was the collaboration with Kathleen Lights. I used to be obsessed with Kathleen Lights channel, so of course I had to pick this one up. All right, let's get into the rest of the palettes. I have this little five pan. I keep most of my five pans in a different part of my collection, but this one ended up here somehow. This is the Melt For You palette. Very similar to the Natasha Denona palette. It's a newer one that I'm loving. This is from the Winnie the Pooh collection. When they restock this, you need to need to pick this up if you're interested. The quality on this one is so good. Another one that I've been loving that's new, that's really great quality, is the In the Limelight. This is my all-time favorite summer palette, you guys. I'm going to be using this non-stop, and the best part about it is the price. And the colors are stunning. So then I have the Go In Coconuts. I dropped this once and put them all in the wrong place. So mine like might look a little different to yours, but this is an amazing palette. I'm going to start putting the nine pans here. This is Lilac You A Lot. If you're ever looking for a specific monochromatic color story, ColourPop is definitely where you want to to look. Blush Crush is a great one for these blushy peachy tones. Smoke Show, which I believe has a different name now. This is a exact dupe for the Natasha Denona Mini Xenon palette, but this is better. Better quality, I'm telling you. Baby Got Peach! Pretty self-explanatory as to what we think that this one was going to look like, right? And then I have the It's My Pleasure palette, 
which is an older one, but it has a really gorgeous purple color story. Uh-huh, honey. Anytime ColourPop had a sale back in the day, I was buying the palettes. So I have quite the extensive collection of a lot of the older stuff. Here's another one, Just My Luck. This is a really nice green palette. Here is one that's fairly new. It came out in the last year. This is Cherry Crush. Pleasantly surprised by this palette. Really nice quality. Not a color store I reach for, but great quality. Secret Admirer. Take a look at this one. Kind of similar to that Cherry Crush, right? This came out for their Valentine's Day collection. From their holiday collection, we have the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer palette. I actually had a lot of fun with this. I recommended this one when I, I did a whole review on it and I thought it was a fantastic one. Here is an oldie, got this my senior year of college. I graduated in 2018, by the way. Dream Street palette, the good old days. And then we also have the Zodiac palette, which also another Kathleen Lights collaboration. You know I had to get all over that. Then we have the Off Melrose palette. This one I had an attachment to for a while. It went through a phase with me. This one, seriously a fun one for the summer. The Malibu Barbie palette. I really like this one. This one came out last summer and I had a lot of fun with it. We have the Raw Beauty Christie collaboration at Forest Sight. I was never in love with this palette. Me and Christie, we have different preferences for color stories. So that's what that is, but it is a nice kind of grungy palette. Sweet Talk, this was my favorite for a while. This came out when ColourPop had a much lesser range of color stories, but I did go through a time where I loved that. Your Cutie, the quality was just okay on this. My grandma bought this for me. I went to Ulta with her and had to have this. Sailor Moon. Look at this. I keep the box on this one and I will because my childhood right here. I love Sailor Moon. Didn't love this palette in particular, but I don't care. It will always be mine. Also, another childhood defining collection, meaning I don't care if I like the palette or not, so I will keep this. This is the Hello Kitty and Friends collaboration. This came out over the winter. Ooh, so cute. I think it came out a winter that I was teaching. I remember I had taught an online class in the years of the vid. And this came and I took pictures in the snow with it. So this is the Mulan collaboration. All of these collaborations are near and dear to my heart. And this actually was like a really good palette. Here's another nine panner nude mood. This one is super good. I don't know why, but the quality on this one is super <laughs> special. And then we have California Love. This I went through a phase with as well back in the day. Really liked this one for quite a long time. And then also this came out in a summer collection and it's just phenomenal. This is the Limoncello. And by the way, this is purple eyeshadow, not like a nasty bruise or anything. Quality on this one is A1 and I love the packaging. My ColourPop collection is a little out of control. Let's organize these drawers. Okay guys, so it's time for the final drawer in the unit. It's not the end of the video though. I have a few drawers of shame that I'll talk about. But these are my affordable palettes that I like to keep. I do a lot of affordable videos now on like my TikTok and stuff. Let's get to it. This one I know I'm instantly sending in a drawer up. This is another ZC palette from the British Museum collaboration. Not sure how it got put there, but we're just gonna squeeze this up here. All right, so first things first, I have this palette from Essence. I like to mob it, mob it. And I'm not obsessed with this. <laughs> Don't like the quality so much. I have a collection of BH Cosmetics palettes. I have the Avocado Toast. I have the Los in Los Angeles, a great spring palette. Summertime in Saint Tropez. This one is my all time favorite BH palette. Mimosa. That one's really pretty as well. I also have this Sunkissed palette from Profusion, a great brand at Walmart. 
for really affordable eyeshadows, kind of like in the Morphe family, but better. Um, this, this is a Makeup Revolution and Soph X collaboration, and this is the Extra Spice palette. I love Soph X. I went through a phase with her, so of course I had to get her collaboration, and I love the colors that she chose. This is one of the best truly drugstore palettes. This is the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette. Really phenomenal neutrals in here have a couple of Juvia's Place palettes. So this is the Warrior palette by Juvia's Place. I also have this one, which was a holiday palette, the Wahala 2. This was an incredible, incredible palette from Juvia's. There's a couple of Flower Beauty quads that I have. These are okay, not the best quality, the Petal Play palettes. This one is in bloom, and then the darker one is very more. Then I have the e.l.f. and Jen Atkin palette, an underrated palette if you ask me. Very boring, but underrated nonetheless. I have the rose gold nude palette, which looks like this. this is the earth and ocean palette from e.l.f. Fun colors in here. I have fun with these e.l.f. palettes when I do an intentional full face of affordable makeup. This is the new classics. Um, this is a palette that was in collaboration with Jay Kissa. It's a rainbow palette, really great affordable rainbow palette. Here is the Retro Paradise. This one was underrated, in my opinion. What a fun curation of colors. And I have a couple of these little babies. I have more. You'll see that later. This one right here is truffles, and then we have cream and sugar. These are the best elf ones. I have one swimming in here as well. This, this is hot jalapeno, which is not the best in my opinion. I have some Chic Me palettes, which is an online clothing store that came out with a makeup line, and these are very easy to use eyeshadow palettes. I did a collaboration with them when it came to these. And I was quite impressed, particularly with the cheek products. The eye products are pretty good, but the cheek products are where it's at for that brand. Alter Ego, they create dupes for Natasha Denona. I know some people like that I talk about them, some people don't. I don't follow up with them too closely, but you can see what palettes that they are. I actually like to bring these to travel with if I want a Natasha Denona palette without risking breaking it. I mean... You can choose to support if you want or not, but these are pretty good quality. Not as good as ND though. Oh, here is a, another BH Cosmetics palette. This is the Naughty palette. I love this one as well. Here is a Revlon palette. These are not the greatest quality. I have a few more that I need to test, but this is in the shade The Big Bang. And I have this Revolution palette. I do not like this palette in terms of quality, but I think Rachel Leary did a phenomenal job of curating the palette, right? Don't we love the tones of this? And I just wish the quality was a little bit better or a lot better. Do you guys remember this catastrophe? I mean, I really like the color story of these. <laughs> I still have them. This is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. I don't even know what this is called anymore, but it, this palette is the Bling Boss. Armed and gorgeous. Concepts is there, you guys, as are the color stories. Dark Magic, how cool is that? And Ring the Alarm. Could not tell you the last time I used these, but I don't know. I like to look at these. I like the color stories. These inspire me. And then I have the original. This is like the very first lunch. Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This was a good one. You know it. And I loved this one. This was my first rendezvous into pastels. This 35i palette. Morphe palettes are definitely my guilty pleasure. Jeffy <laughs> Jaclyn Hill Volume 2. This one is a bit bright for me, but love the textures in here. Oldie but goodie, a Morphe 3502. Super duper warm. Do you guys remember when we wore orange eyeshadows all day? I have this one. <laughs> and then this is the... 39s palette which is a lot of purples look at that not the best quality but again i don't know i have a slight attachment to morphe palettes i always have and always will i think they're good values for what they are great for teenagers all of that okay i mean was that it was that that drawer all right let's fill her up Oh, you 
thought we were done, huh? <laughs> I have my drawers of shame here. Yeah, this is embarrassing. The other ones, like, I could face all that was happening in the long drawers, but in my Alex 9 drawers, drawers of shame, these two drawers right here are <gasps> palettes that I've never used. Um, yeah, these are palettes that I need to try. I save these for a rainy day when I want to try new makeup, and I haven't tried these. So here we go. This is one of the new Rem Beauty eyeshadows that I've yet to put on my eyes. This is Groovy Baby. Haven't used that. Well, haven't used all of these. Smitten in Switzerland from BH Cosmetics. How pretty are these neutrals? Haven't put them on my eyes yet. From NARS. What are you? The Bijou palette. <gasps> Isn't that so pretty? It came out during the holiday season. Truly, this is embarrassing. I'm actually embarrassed by this. <laughs> Colored Rain Beauty Rust. Never tried the Color Rain formula, and I bought these a while ago. Here is Cutie Palette from Nabla in Metropolitan. I have Pink Coral from Dior. Ooh, I have I used this? I swore I've used this. I guess not. I guess I just swatched it. She's bright. Okay, so this is from an indie brand, Geology. I thought that this looked pretty basic, but nice. Good for fall. Maybe that's when I'll bring this one out in the fall. Okay, so Teresa is dead palette. I used it once, but it wasn't like a real... Like, I think I used like two shades on my eyes for a super easiest look. This is Teresa's dead palette. Uh, collaboration with Lethal Cosmetics. Gorgeous, gorgeous palette. And like I said, I used it once, but I didn't feel like I used it because I only use, I think I just did like this and this. So I put it in this drawer in hopes that I'd reach for it again, but then I never opened this drawer. So my fault. I'm going to need to put this aside. I do want to use that. I died, lived, breathed for these palettes. Then they went on sale for Black Friday, and I have still not used them. This is the Glam Light Margarita palette. Oh, I forgot how pretty these were. Take a look at this, the wine palette. Literally, I lost my ish with these palettes. The, what are you? I don't drink. Dirty Martini palette and the Chocolate Martini. Lost my mind for these. Never use them. Um, this is the Milani Ungilded Most Love Mattes. Milani is a really great drugstore brand for eyeshadows. I have the Electric Mood from Elf. Had to have this. Lost it after this for months. Finally bought it. Here it is. The Madison Beer Channel Surfing Palette. This is so pretty though. I have a weakness for Morphe and I love the way that that looks. This is a Viseart Palette in Boheme Dream. I had to get this because this was being discontinued and I needed it for my collection. I have the Topes by Juvia's Place. Here's a couple Flower Beauty quads that I've yet to try. This is Black Iris and Gilded Lily. Hoping those are good because those could be dupes. I also have the Essence Oh okay. gosh, Dancing Green. So I've tried that purple one, have not tried the green one yet. A quad from NARS. This is the Orgasm quad. So I love the Orgasm X, so I bought this. Okay, and then here's another Colored Rain palette that I bought. I remember when this was trending on YouTube, the Queen of Hearts. I got this on quite the discount from Colored Rain, so I thought it was a good time to get it because this is a pricey palette. I've heard great things about this formula. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to start keeping them here. Here's another Juvia's palette. This is the chocolate. That looks really pretty. I have the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop Bubblegum Palette. Few Sweet Shop ones here. Because these were selling like crazy and they don't sell them anymore. So right before they sold out, I had to get them because I heard such good things. This is the Sugar Cone Palette. And then I have the Sweet Shop Pistachio Palette right here. That's pretty. I also back here have a collection of the e.l.f. Bite Size quads that I haven't tried these specific colors rose water pumpkin pie i don't know what this is is it blueberry acai you and berry bad and then this is fairly new i got this literally right before i moved the revolution pro influencer overnight i thought it looked really cool let me see so this is the brights palette 
So I don't really like Revolution makeup revolutions, but this is Revolution Pro. So this is supposed to be the more upscale brand. And while I haven't had the opportunity to use these, I thought the palettes looked really cool. Look at this. This is book number two. These warm tone neutrals. Don't these look stunning? And then this is shadow book three, which is a little bit more cooler toned neutrals. So yeah, I haven't heard anything about these palettes from Revolution Pro, but I thought they looked so cool. Last drawers right here. These are mostly more affordable options. It is a little bit of a mix. But I have a few of these Revlon So Fierce eyeshadow palettes, which look so pretty, but the one I tried I didn't like. Then I've actually never used the Paris palette. I know it's beautiful, and I've swatched it so many times, but I've never put it on my eyes from BH Cosmetics. I also have the Blueberry Muffin. I've swatched this so many times, raved about it, know it's going to be great, but I've never done an eye look with it. So that's why those are in here. Then I have the Chase Your Dreams palette from Sydney Grace. Swatched as many times, know it's going to be great, still need to create a look with it. I have the Nabla Cosmetic Secret palette. This is the ColourPop Flutter By palette. This is one of my favorite color stories from ColourPop. So beautiful. And then we have the Iconic Bloom palette from ColourPop as well. Loved the colors in here. Wanted to keep it for myself. <laughs> and then hiding back here, this is a lip palette. Not paying attention to that. But I have the Smoke in Roses palette from ColourPop. ColourPop came out with a billion big palettes at once. I'm just going to let those fly. I never used this, but I thought this was so pretty for bridal. Here's another big one that came out pretty close to Smoke in Roses. This is the Gone Matte palette. Reminds me a lot of the Vizier. That, that's mostly why I keep this one around because I don't need it, but... If I ever do a video on alternatives for the Viseart palettes, this one is really great for that video. And then I have the Glam, <laughs> another one. Died for this, had to have it, the Michaela and Glam Light collaboration. So gorgeous, got it on a great discount. Oh my gosh, still haven't used this beauty. Wow. Then I have this from Kimchi Chic. This isn't available anymore, but this is actually the cutest palette that I've ever, ever seen. It's literally so tiny. I love it. The pans are so tiny. It's like a pocket-sized palette. It's amazing. And I have this from Makeup Revolution. I probably will end up giving this away just because I kept it because the color story had potential. But when am I ever gonna use this, you know? And then I have the Alamar Spanglish palette. This one just got lost in the sauce, you know? And then I picked this up from Walmart because I thought this could be useful for a video. I feel like this has so many good dupes for palettes that are coming out nowadays. So I keep this around for that. Like, it looks like ABH Norvina. And then final palettes back here. I actually have a second one of these, so that needs to be given away. I've used that palette before. Then I have the Sigma Ambiance palette. I'm like messing up the box. Guess I'm keeping this. So this is another Sigma palette that I really need to try because look at my color story. I mean, the Sigma color stories are so good. And then I also have the Alter Ego Luster palette. I haven't used this. This is a dupe for, I believe, Divine Rose. Yeah, Divine Rose from Pat McGrath. Almost done, you guys. That's like almost all of my palettes. <laughs> so just so you have an idea, I mean, my makeup space is crazy, but I organize my videos with these bins. Like this is for a video, this is for a video, so that's an eyeshadow palette. I keep my eyeshadow palettes of the month here, so these are currently in my rotation. I have the new Viseart palette, the Lethal palette, Solman 2, ColourPop Star Wars, new Nomad palette, couple color pops in there. And then I have some other palettes that I plan on using very soon. I just put those in a haul video. And the last bit of palettes, I have some baby ColourPop ones. 
just here that I got from holiday sets and whatnot. Keeping these for dupe options. Um, okay, I don't like my best, but anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed my eyeshadow palette collection. I'm gonna count them and see how many there are and be smacked into reality. You can see my uh, filming stage back there. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my eyeshadow palette collection. Let me know if you love eyeshadow palettes as much as I do, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.